It's cognition does <laughs> not that clear from the <laughs> uh, from the title. Yeah, it's use it or lose it. The Irish evidence. It's the fact of retirement on cognition, and this is a, a work with uh, Robert Wright, who is at the University of Strathclyde in uh, Glasgow in the UK. And Robert was my PhD supervisor, so we are both interested in this. So we decided to uh, work together again. So as always, I'll uh, tell you a bit about our uh, motivation, about uh, uh, previous studies, looking at a similar uh, research question, about how our approach and how it is uh, different from the other studies. I will show you some estimates and then some concluding comments. So the usual uh, structure. So um, starting with the motivation, we know that uh, in Ireland life expectancy has increased significantly in the last century. So um, uh, men uh, uh, at, uh, in 1926, uh, uh, reaching age 65, would uh, uh, expect to live for another uh, 13 years, and life expectancy again, for men age 65 and above has increased to 70.6 in 2011, so it's a, a change of five years, or 35, 37%. Uh, similarly, women, life expectancy at 65 was 13 uh, years in 1926, 20.6 in 2011, so an increase of around 54%. Uh, and uh, uh, this is basically what has happened in the last century, but going forward, all the population project to increase even more dramatically, and these are uh, CSO estimates, or projections, actually better. And uh, so, uh, again, in Ireland, number of people aged 65 and above in 2011 was around half a million, projected maybe to increase to 1,400,000 in 2046, and even the uh, number of people aged 80 and above is supposed to uh, always projected to increase dramatically. So basically, there are going to be more older people in the population, and especially those more really the, the very old, as we call them. So also those age 80 or 90, they're, they're going to be there in more. They're, they're just going to be there more. And uh, uh, so is this a problem? Well, it's where economics, and we always uh, um, uh, speak about big expected increase in pension payments and age-related benefits, again, uh, because the uh, uh, working population is shrinking. All the population is, uh, is increasing, so of course this is a big challenge for uh, pension payments and other benefits, but uh, today I will, I'm not looking at this, I'm looking at another uh, kind of issue, which is the need to, prefer, uh, to preserve cognitive function or uh, cognition, because we know, and this is a fact, and there's a lot of evidence of, on this, that cognition declines in old, in old age, especially some aspects of cognition called uh, fluid uh, cognition. And uh, as we are having, as I just showed you, more older people in the population than we are expecting also that there will be more uh, people living with dementia or other forms of cognitive decline which seem uh, to uh, appear in, the, in, in old age. And uh, um, so age is a very important uh, factor uh, determining cognitive decline, but it's not the only one, because if it, if it was just because of aging that when we reach 65 or 70 or whatever, then we would, we would just experience cognitive decline. But some people do, some people don't. So why, why is that? Maybe there are other factors which are responsible for a cognitive uh, decline. And there's a, a, a model, theoretical model, which has been uh, um, developed by Stern in 2002 and 2003. So um, basically assumed that some uh, form of brain lesion occurs, and don't think of an accident or something, just your brain is aging, so it's not working as well as before. And uh, I, how do individuals uh, cope? There are two uh, hypotheses. The first one is called the uh, passive uh, uh, process. So, so basically, it's sort of genetic. So for example, people who have bigger uh, brain size, uh, so bi or, yeah, bigger brains, basically maybe they cope better. When, once this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, lesion start to uh, start occurring, then this, uh, basically the brain reacts in a better way. So this people will experience less cognitive uh, uh, decline. But uh, what is much more interesting for us is also that the other uh, side of the coin is basically that maybe coping is an active uh, uh, process. So uh, basically what you do in your own life uh, can help you in um, uh, coping with this uh, uh, brain lesion while this occurs. So basically uh, there are the networks in the, uh, in the brain and when they start damaging, if 
maybe your brain has been uh, uh, trained uh, to uh, to react to this, then it'll, it'll find other networks or other other pathways to cope with uh, with damage. And uh, uh, so, in the medical literature, uh, uh, this active uh, um, uh, activities, yeah, active, active, uh, that people uh, can do are more related to life as choices like social engagement or active lifestyle, leisure activities, or going to uh, doing sport or going to, to clubs, reading books, uh, doing puzzles, and so they all this kind of activity and how this can help you to uh, prevent cognitive uh, decline. But we know that one way to remark to remain active is actually working. Uh, so economists have started to show a bit of interest in, in that uh, as well. So the basic two questions are, does working longer help uh, preserve cognition and does retirement uh, cause uh, a cognitive decline? So this is basically the, the framework. So working seen as one of the activities that can help you to prevent uh, damage or to prevent cognitive, uh, cognitive decline. And uh, um, uh, why do you think this 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 can uh, this can be the case? Why there are some uh, what you can, can call direct effects of retirement on cognition, and that's the use it or lose it hypothesis. When you're working, you use your brain. It uh, depending, of course, on on the kind of job you have. Maybe you lose it more or less, but you sh should use it anyway. And once you you start you stop working, you don't use your brain anymore. So then it, it becomes a bit uh, passive that way. Or even when retirement is already on site, then you start doing less mental exercise at work. We can also think about indirect effects of retirement on cognition, which is not really what we're focusing on, but of course we need to at least um, um, say that this can happen as well. So for example, once you retire, you lose your social connections that you've made at work, or you start investing more time in unhealthy habits like drinking as compared to, uh, to uh, before. And uh, the good uh, thing is that impact of retirement on cognition is a testable hypothesis, providing that you have the uh, right data, of course, but uh, as always, two main uh, challenges uh, arise. Uh, first one is uh, unobserved heterogeneity. So if there is something that stays in the uh, error term that is correlated with both retirement and cognition, we can't control for it. So problematic and then reverse causation. That may be poor cognition after retirement actually may be the cause, not the effect of uh, retirement. So studying this is accessible, but it's, it's, not, it's not easy. And uh, so all the stories going to say, well, retirement is bad, couldn't you tell a story to say, you retire, so now you play more golf? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the, the moment of the survey is what we call a, a retirement. So inactivity, if you want to think about this way, and other controls which are for this user, of course, age and education. And uh, uh, these uh, uh, papers uh, uh, focus either only on men, there are three of uh, them uh, focus on men and women together, and only one study looks at men and women separately. In terms of econometric methods, they use uh, uh, IV and uh, either in a cross-sectional or in a, a, a static panel uh, form. Uh, one paper used dynamic panels controlling also for a uh, lagged uh, mm, Cognition and uh, as instrument, they uh, they use the variation in policies determining determining legislated early and normal ages of eligibility of uh, public uh, old age pensions. So basically, um, this variation can be either in, in cross uh, cross national for studies like share where you can where you have different uh, countries or uh, if there are changes in the legislation within one country that you can use you can exploit variation. Uh, that uh, way. But the results are inconclusive. So may, basically when they look at the association, they all find that retirement or not working and uh, a cognition are negatively associated, but when they do IV or when they try to um, uh, investigate causation, then it's where it falls a bit apart. And yeah, different studies find different results. So it's still a bit uh, um, of an open uh, question. Everything okay so far? So we use TILDA, of course, and uh, uh, we, we focus on women uh, who undertook the health assessment at wave three, and I'll tell you why. We focus on, on women uh, because we use uh, IV, again, to uh, address causation, and uh, as an instrument, we use the uh, abolition of the marriage bar, and you're most an Irish audience, so may, maybe you know what the marriage bar was, but obviously I will uh, explain you uh, what it is. And uh, Vincent Sullivan is actually the person who put this quest the questions about a uh, marriage bar in the, in the questionnaire, so uh, we're very grateful to, uh, to him for this. And uh, as a result, we find that we have a small but significant negative effect of uh, retirement on uh, cognition. So, uh, first of all, Tilda, I guess maybe you all know about it one way or the other, but uh, it's a, a study on aging in Ireland funded by Irish Life, Atlantic Philanthropies and Department of Health. A sample of 8,500 participants at, at wave one, the majority of which age 50 and above, and a few hundreds age less than 50 because they were the spouses or partners of res eligible respondents age 50 and above. It's a longitudinal study in nature, so we interview respondents every two years for uh, 10 years at least. Hopefully it's interdisciplinary, so we have uh, health, economics and social, and uh, that's the main uh, structure uh, of uh, the data. So uh, way one was collected most in 2010, we have the CAPI, which is a computer-assisted personal interview, so interview uh, with a computer in the respondent's home, and then we have the self-completion questionnaire, which is a booklet uh, that we leave with the uh, respondents for more personal or private uh, issues like relationship quality with your, uh, how, uh, with your spouse or uh, traumatic events in childhood, and then we have the health assessment, which is the most ex expensive but hopefully also most useful um, part of the study, so a health assessment done either in the centre, which at wave one was in Dublin or, or Cork, or in the respondent's home if the respondent uh, is too frail, for example, to travel to Dublin or to Cork or doesn't want to uh, travel. And uh, uh, then wave two, no health assessment, only copy self-completion questionnaire, and wave three, which is uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the wave I'm using in this uh, paper, it's again the three components, so we have health assessment. Again, and we are uh, currently collecting way four. So, uh, going back to the paper, um, uh, I said I want to. We want to uh, investigate the fact of uh, retirement duration on cognition. So, of course, we need to find good cognition variables. Until there's a lot of uh, uh, co uh, cognitive uh, uh, variables, so we're we're a bit unsure how to to do this? Should we use all the variables? Should we pick the ones that we think are good for us? And it's, uh, uh, it was a bit, a bit difficult. But uh, we decided to use two um, variables from the health assessments, which are color traits, task one and two, and I'll explain you what they are. But 
First of all, I'd like to tell you about the advantages of these measures, that uh, they were they are health assessment measures, so they were quali uh, measured by qualified nurses uh, in the health or the home assessment, so not by the interviewer in the respondent's home. So we thought that this is good because this minimizes the problem of intra-household learning effects because uh, if it's just an interview with the interviewer and uh, the respondents, then maybe if you have husband and wife, it might be that the wife uh, is interviewed after the husband and she, the, the husband does the cognitive test and then the wife uh, does it as well. So maybe she has learned uh, from her husband if they are in the same room. Uh, um, again, because it's a health assessment minimizes problem of difference in test motivation of participants because maybe if you do your um, uh, the, te the cognitive test at all, maybe you're more relaxed with the interviewer, maybe you don't uh, uh, perform as well as you could, whereas maybe if you do it in the health assessment, uh, you do. And then uh, it uh, measures important domains of, con uh, of cognition for our research question, which is processing speed and fluid cognition, which I'll explain you a bit later what, uh, better what they are, and then they are also reliable as they are easy to administer and ambiguous to score. So because of, of all this, we thought that these are a good uh, measure. So what are they? Uh, so the character is task one, so basically the, the nurse hands this to the respondent and the respondent is instructed uh, to draw a line from number one to number 25, so uh, one to two, two to three, three to four, until uh, uh, the respondent reaches 25 and there's protocol in case the respondent gets stuck or does a mistake. And uh, uh, the second uh, measure, so the color color trail task two, it's, it's the same, but now the respondent has to alternate pink and yellow, so it'll be one pink, two yellow, three pink, four yellow, until uh, it reaches 25. And these have been, have been used in the medical literature a lot, and uh, especially the, the second one is, uh, uh, is supposed to be a good measure of uh, problem solving, and uh, it's an executive function uh, measure. So basically how you, because of these alternating uh, colors, basically how you, how you process that and how you uh, yeah, are you, how you find solution to go from pink to yellow. And it might, might sound a bit trivial, but apparently it's a very good uh, measure. So, uh, first of all, we have to check if these measures behave as we think, and they do, because this is uh, the first measure, so color trade task one, and this is age, and this is the time the respondent uh, takes, uh, uh, the time it takes for the respondent to complete the task. So order individuals basically uh, are a bit more slower, more slow, yeah. And the same for uh, the second uh, task, uh, again, age on the uh, uh, x-axis and time com needed to complete the task and older people are more slow. Um, how do we define, so this is... Is the speed be related to how fast they can move their own or something like that? Uh, well, you do a... Um, you do a practice test first to uh, to get a bit familiar at least with this, <laughs> and uh, I think if if people have some physical limitations, then they are excluded. So, like for example, if you are, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if your arm is broken or your particular, but I think you, you're probably thinking about more subtle differences. Yeah, just uh, some yeah, so I, like <laughs> I. I, I, I don't know, I think, I don't think it's a big issue because otherwise it would have been picked up in the medical literature, but it's a good question. It's, more, it's more variable to the right. You see that in that Wait. last chart? It's kind of heterosclastic. Yeah, yeah. It's like Kobe picking up these really old people who are shaking <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, true. Yeah, and also, yeah, we have less people in the cells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have less people. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then we have to define retirement duration, uh, which is our control of interest. So um, uh, at each wave, respondents are asked to report their labor market uh, status. Uh, so this is uh, uh, for women. Uh, so if I can say employed, self-employed, retired, looking after family or home, sick or disabled, unemployed, educational training or other. And uh, that's um, uh, the distribution of uh, 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 in numbers and percentage terms in, in, the, in the sample. And uh, for the purpose of this paper, we defined as uh, uh, basically not working. So those with uh, retirement duration of 
those are working, so with a retirement duration of zero, those who report to be employed or self-employed, and then everybody else would go into this retired category. So it would be those who say who are retired, but also looking after families, sick or disabled, uh, unemployed, or educational training, or, or other, because they are not working. So retirement, as I said before, defined as not working for pay, but we do some sensitivity analysis around this. And then for the duration would be the date of the uh, of the health assessment minus the days that you told us you retired or you stopped working. It's just the time elapsed in uh, uh, we do it in years, month and so looking uh, after family, there would be people called carers really? No, it's not really it's more homemakers. Oh, or you're you're looking after someone No, no, it's a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, carers, yeah, something different, yeah. You, you can also be a carer, but then we have a section of carers, and you can look at that, but no, it'd be more, yeah. And actually, a lot of women, as you can see here, they, so yeah. Does it matter whether you count sort of home production as being working or not working? Um, uh, yes, we do some, uh, yeah, sensitivity analysis around, no. Um, but actually, for women, like, you can see even two women who have exactly the same working history. Maybe one considers herself as retired, one considers herself as homemaker. So it's, uh, yeah, it's more how they define themselves in terms of economic outcome for us. It's the same. But if you have people who have never worked, yeah. who have always been probably yeah. hard for them to go from four to three in that in this Yeah, we exclude those who never, who never worked. Uh, there are not many, but uh, yeah, we, they are not in our in our in our because yeah, we wanted at least uh, to have that these women. Uh, they're uh, some, retiring from something. Some, 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 some attachment to the labor to say market. It's not a job, but yeah, yeah, of course, no, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, it's a labor market. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the yeah, the mean retirement duration is twelve years, and it's. Uh, it's quite, it's quite high, but also because, as we see, there are all these women who are retired because of the marriage part. So, what's the age now? What's the age? 60, 66. So, they'd be retiring on average. Hmm. It's uh, because of the, yeah, also of the marriage part. And so, we have a lot of women who've been outside the labor market for uh, many years. Retired. Yeah, we're retired. Retired. exactly. Yeah, in that sense. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, that, yeah. So, for men, it's much. But shorter, you know. and uh, um, so yeah. Uh, other controls we use the age and education, and then just some childhood uh, variables because we want them to be uh, exogenous. So um, uh, whether uh, um, respondent reported that she was in poor health when she was a child, she grew up in a poor family, had no books at home, mother was not working, or father was not uh, not working, and that's uh, um, uh, the. Uh, the distribution of uh, the, this variable, so uh, not, not, nothing uh, particularly uh, <laughs> striking here. And uh, uh, okay, so uh, maybe then we move to the IV approach. So again, we are trying to uh, study the effect of retirement duration on cognition. And if this was our framework, it would be great. We could do OLS and be happy, but maybe. Uh, we can't if we think that the er uh, error term is uh, correlated not only with cognition but also with the retirement duration. So if we find an instrument which is correlated with uh, retirement duration but not with the error term and not directly with cognition, then maybe we can do IV and um, uh, tackle uh, uh, this problem. And uh, um, so the instrument is the abolition of the marriage bar, which is the legal uh, requirement that women leave paid uh, employment on uh, on getting uh, married, uh, which was a ban in Ireland. And the uh, justification was that women were occupying jobs that men uh, should do. And the, it was a reaction to high male unemployment rates in the 1930s. And uh, uh, other countries had marriage bars like the Netherlands or the UK, but in these countries, marriage bar was... Um, uh, abolished quite uh, early, like in the 40s or in the 50s, whereas in Ireland it was abolished much later. That's why we have women in our sample who are affected uh, by, uh, by this. Uh, so it was enforced for primary school teachers in 1993. It was uh, uh, fully enforced for civil servants <coughs> in 1956. I say fully because there were already some legislative moves even in the 20s. Uh, it was in 58, then it was lifted for primary school teachers, but uh, at the same time, for example, enforced for uh, a female uh, police force. 
1973 lifted for civil servants, and then the, the real end was 1997 with the Employment Equality Act, when discrimination on the base of, uh, uh, the base of uh, gender was uh, made uh, illegal. Uh, question, no? And well, was that the case of women who are widowed could, could resume? Um, with, so you have to look, I mean, you leave? When you get married, and then when you're yeah, the husband yeah. dies. It yeah, yeah, it's a cold. Yeah, yeah. There was a, um, or even if you are deserted, uh, yeah. wife, you call it that. But I think it was yeah, it was not for the deserted. I write it was very difficult to prove it. <coughs> and widow, yeah. yeah. It's easy to prove it. Yeah. Widow. widow, yeah, I guess yeah, because then you are the only potential earner in the family. Yeah, exactly. It was uh, also mimicked by private sector employers like uh, Guinness or Irish Biscuits or uh, semi-state companies like uh, Lingos, and uh, it mostly affected women in clerical and skilled areas. But in, uh, for women in this generation, these jobs were really accounting for around two thirds of all the jobs for women in the labor market. So again, many women were really at risk of being affected by this uh, marriage bar. And uh, as I said, it was abolished late. So. Uh, final uh, law in 1977, which means that uh, uh, women who were affected by this are still alive, and we have them in Tilda, and so they, we asked them, did you ever have to leave a job because of the marriage bar, yes or no, and 440 said yes. So what proportion of the private sector people this? Uh, it, um, it, there's no, I don't think there's really data on that. It's more on the on the kind of jobs these women were uh, were doing. So if it was a clerical, clerical or or, or skill school jobs. So these women doing these jobs in the private sector were likely to be affected as well. But so, so for example, Guinness had a rule that once you get married at 15, you have to leave. Yeah, usually they they gave. They, for some companies, you didn't have to leave straight ahead. Maybe you could stay for another year or two, but yeah, then you have to go. And they were giving them a gratuity, both in the public and the private sector, and uh, yeah, to go on. Yeah. And there's no, I don't, I don't know, again, if the Irish people, <laughs> I, we, uh, there's not so much about this in the out there. Like, I really have to go to Trinity, to the library, you know, and look for old documents, and it seems a bit under understudied as a, the topic given that it was so important and... Uh, I think as far as I remember there was a considerable benefit from going if, if you went because the financial year and the mm -hmm. first of April if you went on the last week of the previous year you got a benefit I forget now what it was that was, was something that used to operate but was, you got a big benefit if you got married yeah. in a certain week of the year oh, or right. before a certain week it's a, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, is this uh, exogenous? Is that where the exogenous we think yes, because it was a government decision, and because there is little evidence that uh, women were forced to choose between either working or uh, getting married. And I have some graphs, uh, which hopefully. Um, Why women who wanted to work have avoided companies that strictly enforced the marriage plan? Uh, yeah, but then, yeah, but then, I guess, yeah, that's an option, but then you'd go for a, as I said, most women were really employed in the sectors that were affected by the marriage bar, so either you're just going to be cleaner rather than a, a sectory, and... Uh, it was one of the things that made primary teaching so attractive. Attractive? Yeah, because they abolished it. Because they had to leave. No, because in 1957, as you said, ah, when they left, when they lifted it, was it. abolished. So yeah, then on, from that, teacher, yeah, really, okay, yeah, true. Because you could continue to work full time. Yeah, true. That your yeah. Working year coincided yeah. with, the, with the, 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 yeah. the school year. Yeah. And you could find a yeah. possible farmer. That was always the <laughs> teacher and the farmer, primary teacher yeah. and the farmer. <laughs> the stereotype that becomes <laughs> real, yeah, no, yeah, that's, um, yeah, it's not perfect that way, I guess, but I think. Places like, you know, the biscuit factories and yeah. stuff like that, you've had a lot of them working. They didn't want to work there. Mm. Okay. So it's a question of whether it's fine. It's mm. a nice question yeah. of whether it's fine. Yeah. You do that and they can't get a workforce, and then why would the private company do that? Mm. Well, it's mm. a union. That's a, a union sometimes pushed it. 
Yeah. Because they were protecting me. Yeah. 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 I thought that too. Like don't enforce it, then you also get a better skill. Work. Yeah. So that's a, a, a chart, actually, a, or yeah, some figures from 1970. Uh, so uh, female activity rates uh, by marital status in Ireland and in other countries, and Ireland is here. Uh, so basically, in blue, we have the single women, and you can see that uh, um, activity rates were higher for single than for married women in all the countries in focus, including uh, Ireland. But then when we look at married women, like Ireland really is the country with the lowest uh, um, uh, activity rates for uh, married women. So there must be something going on here because married but women are not working. Most countries had any sort of marriage ban. The example you used a few slides ago were two countries that aren't up there, Netherlands and the UK. Yeah, but no, I yeah, well, this is 1970. The odds are none of them do. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a good question. I don't think this country had it, but it's probably bad. So are you going to need to assume that people who were affected by the marriage bar then didn't go to work in another occupation subsequently? Uh, we know, we asked them, so we know whether they, they, they went back or not. So half did go back to work and half didn't. For our um, purpose here, we still compute um, retirement duration and as the difference between the, la um, the time elapsed between leaving the last job and, and now. So if you went back to work, this is taken into consideration in our model. But the data says it's a 50-50 split. It does yeah. mm. yeah. if, if, if people are changing occupations because of this, then it could be just long-term effects of the kind of work they did. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, ex yeah, 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 yeah. In the discussion, actually, we yeah, we speak up, speak about this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's very important. And um, uh, um, also, not marrying was not really an option because again, you could say, well, not getting married, keep on working. But uh, in Ireland, like in many other countries in uh, in Europe, basically, we have in blue uh, the percentage of never married women and in uh, red the percentage of married women and by birth, birth cohort. And uh, yeah, in basically, you know, the cohorts in focus, we can see that the women who never got married are really a minority. So marrying was the thing to do for women in these generations. And um, uh, did the participation rate change after the marriage bar was lifted? It did. So for example, in 1971, um, uh, participation, labor force participation uh, rate for married women age 15 and above was 7.5 and then it jumped to 14.5 in 1975 so something must have happened there because there were no big demographic shifts or changes that can explain this otherwise and uh, uh, another thing we were worried about what if these women were just delaying marriage so uh, so then you'd expect that when the bar is lifted, then everybody, all these women go and get married if they hadn't got married before. But it doesn't, again, seem to be the case. If anything, these are um, two graphs about uh, marriage rate general and crude. Marriage rate has decreased in, from the mid 70s onwards. So we don't see this increase in marriage rates after the marriage bar was lifted. So we think because of all this, this instrument seems to be working well. But um, yeah. So, uh, Going to results then. Have you checked whether being affected by the marriage bar is correlated with your predetermined variables, like the number of books in your house? Uh, the, so, so, say it again, sorry. The, so, whether being affected by the marriage bar is correlated with those predetermined variables you have? Uh, you know, like the number of books growing up. Yeah. Things that shouldn't, it shouldn't be correlated with. Well, um, um, no, no, uh, okay. No, we do we do the this form and other things, but you're doing something different. Okay. I will. The, other, the other thing about what, what, what when you're looking at cognition and you've got a variable that people have to recall, is there some issue that mm. they may not remember well? Mm. 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 Well, that could also apply to. Um, yeah, retirement duration as well, because I ask you when you're retired and what, especially for 1956 or 70. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we. Well, 
Well, do you see a clumping of retirement ages around the marriage, time of marriage? Because I assume that's another variable you have in there, right? The what, sorry, the... Do you, do you, I assume you have information about when they got married? Yes. Yeah, I looked at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that looked quite, that worked quite well. Yeah, yeah. So that's one argument that maybe yeah. are, you know, at yeah. least for that set of people that know yeah. that when they because that's probably an event I'd like to think that I'll remember for a while. <laughs> is when no, I got it's married. true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, check is one of the few oh. variables where if we have husband and wife in the sample when they they agree. And the number of kids sometimes they they have different opinions, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> or many other things. But uh, year year of marriage, yeah, yeah. No, so that I checked, but uh, I think I did. And uh, but still, we don't have people with dementia or severe cognitive decline in our study. They are excluded. But yeah, uh, yeah, still, could, given that we're looking at cognition, could be an issue. And uh, um, uh, so these are the OLS uh, uh, results. And uh, before I forget, that's the dependent variable. So we first take the log, and then we actually multiply by minus one. Uh, so um, because the original um, variable is time taken to do the task, but uh, we want uh, we yeah uh, multiply by minus one. So higher value means higher cognition. <laughs> Uh, so, um, in terms of uh, our three, maybe mm, most important or mm, yeah, the most important controls: uh, retirement duration, age, and, and and education. So we see that uh, 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 years of education, the coefficient is positive and significant. So more education, better cognition, later life. Whereas for retirement duration and age, the coefficient is negative. Uh, so uh, older, the oh yeah. Older people, lower cognition, longer retirement duration, lower uh, cognition. Uh, law, though, do, you, do you think, I mean, I understand you might not think it's linear, but do you, yeah. you look at the frequencies, do you see that there's some, you know, tailing off? Does the distribution Yeah, work? yeah, no, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, we, yeah, we checked that and we found that, yeah, okay. the log was actually up. Because I know, you know, we log earnings models. No, odd cognition models. no, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we check that and perform better, yeah, the more, more symmetric. And um, uh, for the childhood variables, uh, uh, well, they are all the coefficients are negative, so if remember, these are sort of negative uh, childhood variables. So if you had no books in the house, if you had poor health, poor family, your mother was not working, your father was not working, so if you experience this negative life, then then. Uh, lower cognition in later life, but only two are significant, which are no books, which is actually quite, so the coefficients are quite big, and uh, poor poor health. These women have all been married? Uh, oh, no, so we, there are a few who have never been married there, we didn't, we, they are in our sample, we didn't, yeah. we didn't uh, exclude them. But in, in your IV stuff, it'll only be when well, you got married? Because uh, that can only be affected by a Well, we, we, a we gave zero to the never marriage because they were not affected by the marriage bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. And retirement duration is zero if you're working? Yes. How do you manage it again? It's a long survey of Yeah, it's a yeah, so, yeah, so they are, so basically. An extra month? Of no, it's an extra How year. An extra year will reduce. Position it's like an extra year of age by around um, two per, uh, two percent, okay. and actually of retirement duration zero point two percent. So they're very 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 small, exactly. So actually, I, have a, I can I have this slide here. So these are these are the uh, the coefficients and uh, for retirement duration, age, and years of education. So yes, we said. So it's like one year of not working is. Uh, no, one month of not working is like one year of age because the, the, the um, uh, coefficient of the retired duration is on average one tenth of the or one twelfth of the coefficient of age. Yeah, anyway, yeah, two percent for next year of age and zero point two percent for next year of uh, retirement. Then we do uh, IV. So first we do the. At the first stage, uh, so the marriage bar, uh, so the coefficient is uh, positive and uh, the statistics is uh, around six. And I have uh, 
two models here because the sample sizes are slightly uh, slightly different. So um, uh, marriage bar seems to be a strong instrument in the sense that if you are affected by the marriage bar, then you have a longer retirement duration. Yes. So what about twenty percent of the sample that were affected by the bar? Uh, it's a bit less. The um, 13, 14 percent, I think, yeah. Uh, is that 4.7 years? Um, years, I think, years, yeah, yeah. And uh, then we, we have only one instrument, so we c there's not much we can do, but we do, we have a look at the reduced form anyway to see if, again, the marriage bar is, per is performing in the direction we we think and it seems to be okay because they, uh, in this case the marriage bar is uh, uh, statistically, um, the coefficient of the marriage bar is statistically insignificant. So uh, it doesn't uh, look like the uh, marriage bar is a direct effect on cognition in, in later life, although this is not the proper, uh, this is, uh, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it's but what, when there's nothing else you can do, you hope at least this works in your. You do nothing, you just, yeah, I know. <laughs> I wanted to leave it out actually, but Robert insisted to put it in. Yeah, I, I know. I know, I know. You, you need at least two, no? For one, yeah, for an over identified. Um, second stage. <laughs> uh, uh, so then. Um, uh, the coefficient becomes basically zero, and uh, also the statistics uh, very very low now. And uh, um, we do the Hausmann test, obviously. And uh, if we trust the results of the uh, uh, the Hausmann test, then we cannot really reject the null hypothesis that retirement duration is exogenous because a uh, p-value of the chi-square is around uh, 0.5 or 0 0.3, depending on the regression. So if we trust this, then no evidence of endogeneity, or less results are the ones to trust. So, small effect of retirement uh, duration on cognition. Um, then we do a number of uh, uh, robustness uh, tests, and uh, um, so the way we do it, well, this is our baseline uh, model, and then uh, we, we mm, do the other models where we uh, exclude individuals or uh, do some other uh, tests, and then we do a world test to compare the coefficient of the um, uh, robustness check uh, model with the coefficient of the baseline uh, model. And so, oh, uh, so first of all, we uh, we exclude the, the very old because we think that maybe nobody's really working at this age uh, in this age group. So. Uh, maybe we should exclude them and uh, results stay. We exclude the unemployed, we exclude the sick and disabled, and um, results uh, stay uh, more or less. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, we um, explore no linearities. So we add h square, h square, h and h, h cube. And uh, again, results uh, stay. Maybe, uh, maybe the, the p values is telling us that the coefficient now is physically significant. Uh, statistically significantly different from the uh, coefficient of the baseline model, but still uh, uh, negative and statistically significant. And uh, an interesting one is uh, children. Like we added also a variable for whether the woman in focus has children or not, for many children she has had. And uh, um, uh, so the, uh, uh, the coefficient of uh, uh, retirement duration is still uh, negative and statistically significant and actually bigger than the baseline model. And the, it's not shown here, but the coefficient of number of children is positive. So in this case, more children or having children is association with is associated with better cognition in late uh, late life. Uh, There's another instrument I think you potentially have here, which is that the women who are more affected like to be affected by the by the reform or people in white collar jobs or yeah. whatever. Do you expect? instrument by education, you know, that interaction should be, should be exogenous. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you'd expect so, uh, that should have a, so for people with women with low education, they're probably yeah. going to be effective on it. Yeah, yeah. So that might be worth trying. Okay. Thank you. Um. Another robustness check we do, but I'm not really sure about this, but we say, well, we have still 
uh, it's still a longitudinal uh, study. So for these measures of cognition that we're using, we have them at wave three, but we also have them at wave one. Should we at least try to do first differences so we um, uh, regress, uh, yeah, changes in cognition on changes in retirement duration and changes uh, in age together with uh, uh, the changes in the error term. And uh, uh, that's what we, uh, what we find. So, um, again, the uh, uh, coefficient of, in this case, change to retirement duration is negative, and it's uh, not, not significant with the first um, uh, uh, regressions to the first measure, the statistical 1.6, and it's statistically significant and also statistically significantly different from the baseline model for the second measure of, of cognition. Uh, identification is going to be a bit challenging. Yeah. Have perfect correlation yeah. Change in retirement. And change in age. Exactly. 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 That's why I think it's not really telling us much. I agree with you, but yeah. I mean, you may want to do, although it also has problems, an alternative test would be just to plug in to do a value added model rather than the first difference model. Just plug in the, the cognition. I mean, it has other problems, right? Because you're sticking in a lagged dependent variable on the mm. right hand side. But mm. if you get similar results to this, then. Okay, yeah. Okay, true, thank you. And. Um, you just take people who are working at the first wave, see, it doesn't matter whether they're retired or the Mm hmm. Normally, yeah. Uh, mm, mm. So then would be a short term effect of uh, retirement. Because then retirement duration can be maximum of four years. And usually, for, for cognition, the literature shows that it takes a bit longer. It's not like mental health or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's a good idea. And um, we also do OLS for, for men. We don't have an instrument for men, so we're a bit stuck in terms of what we can do. But OLS, just to look at association as well as possible, so we find uh, um, similar uh, patterns, but uh, um, uh, uh, bigger uh, coefficients for, for men. So again, education, uh, coefficient of education is positive, more years of education, better, con uh, better cognition in, in life life, coefficient of retirement duration and age negative. So older, if you're older, uh, lower cognition, the longer you've been retired, lower cognition. And uh, um, uh, that's actually, uh, table where we compare the OLS coefficients for men and, and women, and uh, uh, they are bigger for men, especially for retirement duration. Double in, in size, although still small, but double in size. Why is that? Is it because work is, uh, means something different for men than, uh, than for women? Is it because men have been, on average, retired for uh, uh, less? Uh, uh, Less, yeah, less time because uh, they were not affected by the marriage bar, so they have had uh, longer uh, career paths, and this is up to uh, interpretation and uh, discussion. So, in to conclude, we investigated the fact of retirement, which, as again, as I said, we define as not working for pay on cognition among older Irish uh, women. We use institutional gender discrimination and the source of randomization or exogenous variations. And uh, we found that the effect of retirement duration on a uh, um, specific aspect of uh, cognition uh, is negative, but is very, very small in magnitude. So if that's the case, then it doesn't look like working longer is really beneficial to cognition and uh, uh, for men we found that the association of retirement duration with cognition is negative and greater in magnitude than for women and as such for men we can't really do IV so that's where we, we need to stop at least uh, with this kind of approach and uh, um, a bit also going back to what uh, Kanika said would be also uh, uh, interesting now to measure also the activities of the life lifestyle since stopped uh, working, but uh, we don't really have life uh, life uh, history, so we can't really go back in time. Like if you retired 20 years ago, I don't really know what you did after you retire. But now that we have longitudinal data where people are working and then they retire wh while they are 
they are in our samples, though, that's when we can really maybe do something a bit different and also hopefully informative.